My earliest memories are of gender dysphoria. I felt lost and at times like I couldn't survive. It took until I was 31 to publicly come out as a transgender woman. Nothing has been the same since. While on the road, I've met gender variant people from all walks of life, all at various points in their journeys. Hearing their stories and then being able to relate myself to it is what I need right now. There are many moments along the way where I questioned whether or not I had made the right decision by choosing to transition. Coming out and realizing as much as you don't want it to that it will change your relationships is heavy. My relationship with my family when it comes to being trans is a very solid. I can say something and get like backlash and anger. I spend a lot of the time outside of the house, so I don't have to be around that negative environment. The very last thing my mom told me before she died was that I, that I ruined myself and I was a disappointment to her. And I don't think she meant it, I just don't think she understood. I worry for just about everybody going through transition. It's extremely difficult. My way of thinking about it is, you know, I have so many queer and trans friends who know me and love me and respect me that it's like, if you can't do that for me too, as my family, then I guess this is goodbye. I love having my mom come out to visit the shows and be around backstage and everything. I mean, she knows, she's known James since he was 14 years old, so it's fun to have her around. And just sort of see the way my mom, after I started transitioning, kind of shifted the world around her, cutting out the people that she saw wouldn't accept me, and then surrounding herself by people that she knew would be accepting of me. I mean, it's beyond words. Danielle's a person that my mother met through her work and someone that my mom said she was becoming close with. I saw it as obviously an asset for my mom, getting to know somebody who's trans to help her understand my experience better. I felt like when Danielle came into our office, it was a gift because it did give me insight into what the struggle that Laura was going through because Laura didn't live near me, so I couldn't talk to her on an everyday basis. It was a tremendous uh, gift uh, having her come into my life at that time. This is a really good picture. <laughs> Going through the, the, the transition is a huge relief. It's just, it's a huge relief, but it's, and it's, and I would never go back and change it, but it has these side effects that are painful. When one member of a couple is going through transition, there's about a 7% chance that you'll be able to surmount that challenge to the relationship. And so I think there's a lot of pressure on the spouse to be very um, accepting and to be perfect. When I first came out to Heather and told her I was a transsexual, I don't think she realized I meant that I wanted to transition. I remember we were making the bed and she said he referred to me with a male pronoun. And I was like, it's a little weird now, right? It's gonna be a weird change. And she's like, what do you mean? She didn't understand that part of it. As she started to perceive me different, then it changed the way she felt about me and her attraction towards me. And I don't think those were things that she realized, you know, at, at first, but those were things she realized eventually that it had changed. I think that transition can have an impact on the identity of the spouse. How can it not? When Laura did come out to me, I did fear that the family would end up splitting up. I did fear that that would happen, and that was heartbreaking to me because I was so overjoyed with that little family. As sad as, as that possibility was, that it was more important for Laura to, to live her life. Honestly, when I came out, I didn't question the security of our relationship. When we got married, I was like, we're getting married and I'm never getting married again. This is the relationship I'm going to be in until I die. I took it for granted that, okay, you know, I've got this set. We have a daughter. We bought a house. We have a car. We're married. So I never questioned it. I just thought that we were soulmates and that was the way it was.
And then I came out and was just kind of swept up in a whirlwind. All of a sudden, I'm coming out in Rolling Stone, and then I'm starting Hormones at the same time, and we're going on tour three weeks later. And I kind of got spit out at the other end of that, where I had the realization of like, I thought it was like this, but it's not like this. This is how it actually is. And realizing that my marriage was over and like that so much I had worked for was gone, it just destroyed me. You know, I've, I've been in relationships before that have ended. In the past, it was always like, okay, and now you go back to being you and I go back to being me. And this time it was like, okay, you go back to being you and I go into uncharted territory. I'm married to Venus. I have been married to Venus for uh, 30 years. So I have some experience with transgenderism. Venus was not aware of his transgenderism when we first got married. It didn't really come to my knowledge uh, until about five years into the marriage. You know, part of me wants to say I might do it differently if I had a choice, but it would be less difficult, but I wouldn't know the things that I know now about the world and about people and about myself, really, if I hadn't gone through this, so. I found that it's easier to date people who don't really identify, period. Um, there's just a fluidity that has to be there. Uh, and I think if you have a rigid definition of your sexuality, you're gonna have a hard time being open to someone who breaks that definition. I've been lately dating trans guys because there's a familiarity, there's familiarity with each other's bodies. We know what we've gone through, what we're going through. There's really no need for explanation of anything. Nina and I transitioned together. We met at a meetup for trans girls. And, and it's been an amazing experience. Um, transition is really intense. You're dealing with a lot of stress from family who's maybe rejecting you, maybe saying crazy stuff. You know, having somebody during that time is, is huge. My partner is my best friend. My partner is one of the only people I can really, like, be open with about everything. So I consider myself a very sexually open person that way. I don't really consider myself someone who just is this way or that way. I consider myself just sort of like, it's about people for me. I am in a relationship. I have a boyfriend. We've been together a little over a year. He had to come out to his family as dating a trans woman. A lot of people don't understand why someone would date a trans person. I didn't understand why someone would date a trans person until I realized, why wouldn't I be lovable, <laughs> you know? I've only ever dated boys before, like boy boys. Um, and it never really worked, honestly. It's kind of cool, it kind of, I love her. I mean, you have to accept that things that are in the past cannot be changed, and that all you have control over is what happens next, and you have limited control over that. The best you can do is try to live honestly, be honest with yourself, be honest with other people. I think that's the best way to be happy in life. Hey, that's out of curiosity. Um, are, you, are, you, are you bi, straight, gay? I mean, just, you know. I'm attracted to women. Attracted to women? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Do you want a date? Yes, I want a date. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want right. to be alone. I'm human. I need to be loved, just like anyone else does. <laughs> I've heard this before. <laughs> a great poet once said. Right. <laughs> so uh, what kind of girls do you like? <laughs> well, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs>